In this video, I'll show you the progress we've made in building a critical asset management system for Dominica. To recap, the application is designed to enable cities, islands and communities to capture information about their critical assets and the dependencies assets have with one another so that officials can plan for and respond to extreme weather events to become climate resilient. We had previously spent time via hackathons and whiteboard sessions with the wider team to build a schema for the application and set up the database in Terminus DB. Using the Terminus DB document SDK, we've built the application directly from the document frames. Authentication is also included so that only authorized users can access the app. The data in this example is fictitious and shows a number of assets on the map. From here, users can select an asset to see what the impact would be to other assets, should it fail due to disaster. The green arrows signify non-critical assets and the red arrows critical assets. The user can toggle these. The user can then get a bigger picture to see what the cascading failure chain looks like by clicking this button, which as you can see, impacts several other assets. Say a hurricane is on its way and a particular asset is susceptible to strong winds, an operator can obtain all the contact details for the affected asset owners. Communication is very important when extreme weather events strike and giving operators clear understanding of who they need to update is priceless in terms of response and preparation. Not all disasters are equal and each event can have different levels of severity. Think Sophia Simpson hurricane scale for example. In this example, we filtered the map by event, and you can see there is a grading for drought based on the US Drought Monitor Scale. Depending on the severity, only applicable assets may be impacted, and this can be reflected on the map. By having asset relationships linked to event severity is useful, particularly when you think of floodplains and location, hurricanes and building strength, and drought in terms of food production and water supply. To add and edit assets and the relationships they have with each other, operators can go through straightforward forms, adding in all the relevant information, including longitude and latitude to ensure it features on the map. Once an asset is loaded, the user can then simply say asset A is dependent on asset B and set up as many links with other assets as needed to ensure that failure chains are accurate. Asset ownership is spread across government departments, utility companies and other stakeholders who work together to use their local and specialised knowledge to build a complete picture of their critical asset infrastructure, something that was incomplete and disparate before this application. The application could be used for preparation, from training to understanding the best locations to place portable support assets, like generators or portable water supplies, it also helps government departments support proposals for grants to improve asset resilience. For example, showing all assets impacted by Category 3 and above hurricanes to obtain asset lists and failure chains to demonstrate where priorities lie. And of course, in the event of a hurricane, earthquake or another disaster, having the knowledge and understanding about the critical asset infrastructure and who to contact is key to ensuring population safety and building back faster. CAMS is an open source project. If you want to get involved, visit climateresilient.world for more information. Thanks for watching.